Shalom, royal family. The class you are about to hear is taught by the Honorable Yudhe Wafe, Beit Nun Sophie Yudhe Wafe, many years ago. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Visit us at www.yahweh144000.com. Also, royal family, you can enroll in classes designed for the Godhead at www.universityofyahweh.org And also, royal family and friends, we want to share with you Yahweh's Keys to Riches. And on that YouTube channel, you can listen to Yahweh's Daily Word and keep up with the correct solar time each and every day. We'd like to see you there as well. Go to Yahweh's Keys to Riches. It's in the description below so that you can join us there as well. Remember, when you get there, just like here, remember to like, share, and subscribe to our channels. All right, Royal Family, we look forward to seeing you there as well. Enjoy. Father the white mason worship a black king. First of all, he was the wisest king that ever lived. First king 430. See, my scholars know all about where to find it because I taught them where to find it. They don't know it unless I teach them. All my children know and adults know you know it because I teach them. You don't know it unless I do it. First Kings 430. Read. And Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the East Country and all the wisdom of Egypt. For he was wiser than all men. And the book lets you know he was what color? <laughs> Song of Solomon went fire? Well, let's take a look and see. Some of us need to read these things for ourselves. Read. I am black, but comely. The wisest man, wiser than all men, black King Solomon, a black man. Now why wouldn't they want this knowledge in the public schools? Can you imagine a school full of white children sitting in the classroom with a bunch of black children and they find out that the black King Solomon is wiser than all men? They say, get that Bible out of school, quick. See, white supremacy be through. And it hurts when you learn this in secret and can't tell nobody. <laughs> well, you finally discover, boy, it's, you found the truth. God, you can't tell nobody that this ain't it. Ooh, it hurts. We are the children of Hiram. Who was Hiram? Hiram was the chief architect builder, King Solomon the Temple, the most illustrious and glorious building dedicated to Yahweh ever built on the planet Earth. It would take several hundred billion dollars to build one today. At today's money standard, gold being about four or five million dollars an ounce. A few billion dollars, not million, billion. And we built it. And Hiram was a chief architect. There were some ruffians, some people who wanted to advance and they say get paid a little more money and they hadn't qualified, hadn't studied. So they wanted to steal the knowledge, so they, they grabbed Hiram and wanted the password. He wouldn't give it to them. So they killed him. They killed him. Chief architect. It was one above him, Solomon, but he was chief built, chief architect. So they killed him. 
that it took his body and hid it in the west in a shallow grave. And Solomon sent his wise men to go and bring the body of his architect back to the east. And they went and they tried to raise Hiram, but every time they would reach down to raise his body up, his flesh would fall away from their hands, bones, and they'd fall back into the grave. So they realized that if they tried to raise him and, and, and carry him back, he would be pieces, and Solomon didn't want to see him in pieces. So they knew they had to go back and find someone that had knowledge of how to raise this man up out of his shallow grave to take him back to the east. But he was dead. Him in the head. Probably hit him in the head. That's what you think. And none of the wise men could do it. So they had to go back to the east Huh? Get King Solomon, the grandmaster, the head, to come back into the west and raise him up. And since he was a king of Judah, the lion, then he had knowledge of the lion's paw. So my brother is symbolically studying that, you know, they're operative masons and speculative. So my speculative brothers, the philosophers, will say that they have been raised by a strong grip, lion's paw. They were horizontal, laying in their grave, in their casket, and they go through a ritual that you'll never forget. I didn't go through it, but they went through it. So I see. And I know, and I don't have to go, I know, but I say, I know go on, I don't wonder, praise Yahweh, because Yahweh knows all things, so being his son, he teaches me. Well, where are the children of Hiram today? In the West. See, there's a certain, there's a certain stone that's called a cornerstone, that the builders of civilization have rejected. So when you, you try to build a building without a cornerstone to lay in one, the building won't be right. It can't it'll be crooked, out of shape, and won't stand. So America can't stand because, and the world, civilization and governments can't stand because they have tried to build a civilization without the chief cornerstone. When you look at the pyramids that's on your dollar bill, and or you see that the cap, the cap at the top of the pyramid is missing. So on your dollar bill, you see it's separated from the pyramid, and there's an all C and I, there's an I there. And in, in, in all Masonic temples, white temples, there's a U in that triangle sitting in that temple. You're sitting, you're sitting in the east. It's there. There has to be someone who has power to raise that cap chief cornerstone from down to the bottom where, that eight, where it sits on 13 square acres. <laughs> Up to the top. It weighs tons. So there's somebody that's a chief cornerstone and that's you. But I'm the only one who can raise you and place you at the apex of the pyramid. In the meantime, you are laying here in the West, dead, merely dead, symbolically Hiram's children. And many leaders have come and have tried to raise you up. Marcus Garvey tried it, Elijah Muhammad tried it, a lot of people tried it, but they couldn't do it because they were not the one. <laughs> you made a lot of publicity, but you didn't make it. You were not the one. They were not the ones. So you, they, they got you raised up a little bit, but your bones and everything fell back into the grave. Why did it fall back? Because they didn't have the master's grip. You can't raise us up under another religion.
So that's why my brothers that study in secret are always traveling east. But see, after you get east, you got to come back to the west. When you get to the east, you find out you're incomplete there. So being incomplete, then you got to return to where the body is. You find out that everything you're looking for is here. See, all the leaders, they went to Africa, they went to Arabia, they went to all those places, and then they come running back, come out, it's in America. Uh, we are, uh. <laughs> they be bragging about how many black nations received them, they take pictures with kings and potentates, but why do they run back over here? You don't see me running over there. I know it's already here in the West. I am the sun to rise in the West. The sun shall rise in the West. It used to rise in the East. Uh, see, I'm, I'm the sun. I'm rising in the West. So when you go over across the pond, you got to get you a little boat and come right on back over here. <laughs> to the West. Where the sun is. That's me. And you'll find out that I have the lion's paw. Because I'm the lion of the tribe of Judah. Chosen to be the ruler forever. You are Judah. And I'm here to make you the ruler forever. I'm raising our children. Hallelujah. It's easy to recognize who I am. Because no one can teach like I teach. No one can make it clear and make it plain like I make it clear and make it plain. And no one has been able to raise you up and do anything with you and cause you to work in unity and in peace and harmony together and accomplish and become rich. And I'm the only one who will teach you how to be rich and take nothing for myself. I don't take a salary, not a dollar. Not a dollar. And I'm the only one. I'm happy for you to be rich. That's my joy. Making you rich where it counts too. Wisdom, knowledge, understanding of Yahweh and then add to you financially. And I put everything in my disciples' names. I don't need nothing in my name. The whole earth belongs to me. This universe belongs to me. It's already in my name. Yahweh. Please ask these chapter 7, verse 16. Please. Be not righteous over much, neither make thyself over wise. Why shouldst thou destroy thyself? You can watch this scripture be fulfilled over and over again in anyone's life who dares go against the wisdom contained herein. If you make yourself overwise, or if you see someone that is trying to be wise in his own eyes, he's about to destroy himself. Verse 17, read. Be not over much wicked, neither be thou foolish. Why shouldest thou die before thy time. Remember this night and remember these scriptures. I repeat, anyone who does not obey these injunctions will suffer the fate of the word of Yahweh. Verse 18, read. It is good that thou shouldest take hold of this, yea, also from this, withdraw not thine hand, for he that feareth God, Yahweh, shall come forth of them all. This is true. Verse 19 reads, Wisdom strengtheneth the wise more than ten mighty men which are in the city. You want strength? Inculcate the wisdom of Yahweh. It says, it is good that you should take hold of this. What? What is this? The 
the wisdom of Yah. It is good that you should take hold to the wisdom of Yah. You'll be more mighty than ten men who are mighty. Let's take a sip. And you will come forth on top of everybody if you take hold to the wisdom of Yahweh and be not wise in your own eyes. But remember Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord Yahweh with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. Anytime we lean to our own understanding, we're going against what Yahweh just said. A wise man will retain the wisdom of Yahweh, which is what I teach. And this is my message for anyone who wants to live eternally in Yahweh. You see one who claims to follow me and they seek to be wise in their own eyes. It's against what Yahweh just said. And if you put your trust in man instead of Yahweh, you are truly under a curse. Verse 6. Proverbs 3, 6. Read. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. In some of your ways. The teaching here is extremely clear to those who wish to retain the knowledge of Yahweh. Whatever your circumstance, don't put your trust in somebody else besides Yahweh. Whatever your circumstance, lean not to your own understanding. Whatever your circumstance, never cease acknowledging Yahweh. He will direct your path. Verse 7, B. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord Yahweh and depart from evil. Praise Yahweh. Verse 13, B. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that getteth understanding. Happy. Do you want to know how to be happy? Seek the wisdom of Yahweh. Seek after the understanding of Yahweh. For the blessing. The problem with the world is the lack of the law of Yahweh being number one. Because men have ignored the laws of Yahweh, there's trouble all over the earth. We should never add to Yahweh's words, not take away from them. Deuteronomy 4, 2. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 2. Read. Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, Yahweh, which I command you. Talking about life given teachings, verse 4. Read. But ye that did cleave unto the Lord your God, Yahweh, are alive every one of you this day. Now my book tells me cleave means to what? Follow in obedience. You that followed in obedience the Lord your God Yahweh are here today. You were alive then and you are alive now. That's the reason that you are alive now. Because you did this. 
you may say, well, seems like wicked people are here too. Yes. Yeah. Those that were wicked yesterday are here today too. But I want to drop two things on you. First, when you face a difficult circumstance, you have to realize that there are trials and tribulations that you must face that will determine the outcome of Judgment Day. Yes. The children of Yahweh are here today and the wicked are here today. But this is a strange day. There's never been a day like this one, neither is there ever going to be a day like this one again. Judgment Day. So those people will be rewarded with heaven forever, eternal life, and the wicked who love wickedness are going to enjoy hell and damnation, destruction, and chased out of the world, the name cut off in the street. So the facts are, anyone who seeks to save his life today is going to lose it. Matthew chapter 10. Verse 39. Anytime you come up on a difficult circumstance and you mean to your own understanding, be wise in your own eyes and trust to find a solution to your life and seek to find it, then you're going to have to beat this scripture to prove that you God over this word. And I have to see it. So believe that you can prove this wrong. Read. He that findeth his life shall lose it, and he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. What a message. Chapter 4, Deuteronomy, verse 4. All of you that follow my laws in obedience, follow and cleave unto the Lord your God Yahweh, are alive. Every one of you. This day. It's a blessing to know that I'm alive today because I obeyed Yahweh yesterday. That makes me to know I shall obey him today so I'll be around tomorrow. <laughs> the fact that I obeyed Yahweh a few thousand years ago and I'm alive today tells me about eternal life. And I don't want mine cut off. Imagine you your individual self is here now because you obeyed Yahweh thousands of years ago, 3,000 years ago, 3,500 years ago. That's why you're here right now. Think about it. You. Every one of you. Now, the man that can cause me to be here thousands of years later gets my vote for whatever he wants to do. He gets my vote. I'm glad I don't have to register at the polls for this. I'm glad I don't have to pass a literacy test for this blessing. Now, we're going to look into what is it that made this possible. Verse 5, Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 5. Behold, I have taught you statutes, and I have taught you judgments. Even as the Lord my God, Yahweh, commanded me. That's what I'm doing. I'm doing what Yahweh commanded me. You must admit that I have been teaching you Yahweh's statutes. Not 
almost teaching, but teaching Yahweh's statutes. And you must admit, though it's unpopular in the world today, I have been teaching you Yahweh's judgments. Just as he has written it, just as you are reading it, this has always been my style. <laughs> to teach you that which Yahweh commanded and you have it written in your books. And what I'm reading and teaching you was in your grandmother's books. <laughs> and it's been in the book since Moses. And it was in the book before Moses. And before Abraham and before Noah and with Adam and before Adam. How do I know? Because I was there before the earth was made and I know what Yahweh taught and commanded and I'm doing that now. Thanks, Yahweh. And you that are sitting here under the sound of my voice with books open are reading exactly what I'm saying. You can read it with me or you can listen to me read it. You can say it along with me or you can say it silently. But you have to admit, I'm coming from the book as commanded. And I'm telling you that in whatever land you go, whether you possess it or not, you should do these statutes and these judgments. Though we were brought to America as slaves from the west coast of Africa, though the knowledge of Yahweh was taken from us and we could not keep his statutes and judgments for 400 long years, yet you have no excuse tonight because I, the resurrection, am resurrecting you into the knowledge and the requirements of Yahweh's statutes and judgment, which will keep you here forever. <laughs> now, it's a mighty God, mighty creator, that because you obey him at some point in the past, that thousands of years later, he has caused you to be alive, though you have done wicked. Your mother and father have done wicked. Though you have gone against him and have not kept them, yet he has preserved you. But I'm here to warn you that he's not going to preserve you forever unless you turn back to him and start observing and keeping his laws and his decrees. Yahweh's laws does not change unless you can change the law of gravity. So you can throw an object up and it keep on going in the outer space. <laughs> then you better know Yahweh's laws don't change. Until you can stop the sun from rising. Or shining on all parts of the earth every 24 hours. Until you can stop the earth from spinning in its own axis, 1,037 and third mile per hour, you had better know that you can't change Yahweh's mind. And he said he has not changed his mind. So his law, statutes, judgments, and commandments remain in vogue. They remain in effect. And if you want to continue to live, you are going to have to disobey the enemies of Yahweh who teach you not to keep his law and return to keeping his will. <laughs> <laughs>